My name is Raj Rajeshwari Rajesh Kumar Singh and I am going to explain spleen. Spleen is a wedge shaped organ that lies in the left hypochondrium and the epigastrium. It is tetrahedral in shape, purple in color, highly vascular and soft. Talking about its dimensions, it is 1 inch thick, 3 inch broad, 5 inch long, 7 ounces in weight, related to 9th and 11th rib and which all of these could be memorized by this odd numbers. Its position is directed downward, forward and laterally making an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal plane. Talking about its end, it has lateral or the anterior end, medial or the posterior end. It has three borders, upper border which is sharp and notched at the anterior side, with um, the lower border which is broad and the intermediate border which is thick and incomplete. Next we have the hilum. Hilum lies between the superior and the intermediate border dispersed by the branches and tributaries of the splenic vessels. Next we are talking about the surfaces, the diaphragmatic surface and the visceral surface, two surfaces. The diaphragmatic surface is convex and smooth and um, the visceral surface is concave and irregular. Next there are two angles of spleen, the anterior basal angle and the posterior basal angle. Anterior basal angle is the junction of superior border with anterior end. Posterior basal angle is the junction of anterior end and the inferior border. Next, we are going to discuss the relations, peritoneal relations. First, gastrosplenic ligament. It extends from hilum of spleen to greater curvature of stomach. It contains left gastroepiploid arteries and short gastric arteries. This is the gastrosplenic ligament. This is the linorenal ligament. It contains splenic arteries, splenic veins, tail of pancreas, sympathetic nerve, pancreatus, splenic lymph nodes and lymphatics. It extends from hilum of the spleen to anterior surface of left kidney. Next we have plenicocolic ligament. It basically not attached to the spleen but supports its anterior end. Now we are going to discuss the visceral relations. The gastric impression between superior and the intermediate border the renal impression between intermediate border and, um, and posterior border and we have colic impression which is triangular in shape, pancreatic impression which is between the helium and the coliac um, and the colic impressions. Next we are going to discuss the diaphragmatic surface which is related to the diaphragm and is smooth. Now let's talk about the arterial supply of spleen. Spleen is supplied by splenic artery, which is the largest branch of the celiac trunk. This artery is tortuous in course to allow movements for the spleen, which can be seen here. This artery are divided into five branches, which later form the straight vessels called penicillae. And this penicillae divides into ellipsoid and arterial capillaries. The further course of blood is given by the compromised theory. The closed theory and the open theory. So the closed circulation theory says that the capillaries are continuous with the venous sinusoids that lies in the red pulp. These are the venous sinusoids and these are the capillaries that are continuous here and these sinusoids join together to form the veins. According to the open theory of splenic circulation, the capillaries end by, um, end by opening into the red pulp where the blood enters the sinusoids through their pores. Finally, it is believed that closed theory is seen when the spleen is contracted and open theory is seen in this distended spleen and hence this is called as the compromised theory. Talking about the venous drainage of spleen. The splenic vein arises at the hilum. It joins with the superior mesentery vein behind the pancreatic neck and these two forms the portal vein. Talking about the lymphatic drainage, spleen, spleen has no lymphatics as such. A few lymphatics arise from connective tissue and drains into the pancreato pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes. Next we have the nerve supply. Sympathetic fibers derive from celiac flexures which are vasomotor in nature supply the smooth muscles of the capsule of spleen. Now discussing the function of spleen. First thing phagocytosis. Spleen is an important component of reticular endothelial system and this all includes the splenic phagocytes. Reticular cells and free macrophages of red pulp, modified reticular cells of ellipsoid, free macrophages and endothelial cells of venous sinusoids, surface reticular cells of lymphatic follicles. Next function is hemopoiesis. 
spleen is an important hemopoietic organ during fetal life while lymphophoresis continue in the spleen throughout the life. Next is the immune response. Cellular response is given by increased lymphopoiesis and humoral response is given by formation of plasma cells in the spleen. Next is storage of RBC. Spleen can store RBC and release it when needed in the circulation. Now, talking about clinical anatomy. Normal spleen is not palpable. However, it becomes palpable when it enlarges towards its normal size. Splenomegaly. Enlargement of spleen sometimes it becomes very very large to project towards the right iliac fossa and notches could be palpated there. Next talking about the splenectomy, removal of spleen. Why? Removal damage to the tail of pancreas is very carefully avoided. Next talking about spleen puncture. Through ninth or the 10th intercostal space using lumbar puncture middle the spleen is punctured. Next is preferred pain of spleen which is felt in the box even here, this, um, area, this area represents the uh, referred pain felt given by spleen. It is basically the upper quadrant of hype, that is the hypochondrium. Next is the Bentai syndrome. It is a chronic congestive enlargement of spleen resulting in premature destruction of RBC. Now let's talk about the histology of spleen. Histology of spleen the capsule of uh, or the trabeculi and the capsule and the trabeculi are formed um, by the fibroelastic tissues. The white pulp consists of lymphatic nodules around an arteriole called as the marfigal corpuscles. The red pulp formed by a collection of cells in the interstices of reticulum. The cells include lymphocytes, all three the RBCs, WBCs and platelets and fixed and free macrophages. Talking about accessory spleen, these are the locations where accessory spleens are present. They are gastrocolic ligament, greater omentum, stomach's greater calf, spinoclonic ligament, small and large bowel mesentery, left broad ligament in women, and the left spermatic cord in men. Locations of accessory spleens are explained via this diagram. Hope you understood. Thank you.